Okay, so this is my first time making a YouTube video <laughs> ever and um, I thought that I would share how I made this super cute satin pillowcase. It's super plain, nothing fancy. Um, it's my first time sewing a pillowcase ever um, and then I would like to add that sewing satin is not very easy. <laughs> Not at all like what I thought that it would be. So I'm just thankful for the experience and to be able to do stuff like this. Um, I am a novice sewer. Um, I started off with a Singer Start sewing machine making scrunchies and things. Um, and I like to do little crafting things like this, you know. Um, sweatshirts, t-shirts, things, and I started my own business called the Strawberry Roan, um, or Strawberry Roan Designs, and um, so my friend gave me the idea, of, she was like, hey, if you made satin pillowcases, I would totally buy one because they're all the rave right now, um, and I thought, well, I mean, can't be that hard to figure out, so I gave it a try, and here we are. This is what I ended up with. <laughs> so I'll show the process of how I did everything. Um, I did not use a, um, like a print off or anything. I had no direction. I just went off of what was in my head, like an idea I had in my head. And this is kind of what it came out. That's why it's not the best. <laughs> and like I said, it's the first thing I've ever sewn like this. Um, so you learn from your mistakes. Um, the one thing I would like to point out is that I am still, I don't really have a very steady hand. Um, so I've been working on that. Um, and then my seams, I could have done a little better on. I cut out extra fabric. So I cut out extra fabric so that I could um, give myself room to make mistakes. Um, Cause again, I moved to this um, and then I could have done better on the seams in the sense of like, now that I'm looking at it, the trim could have been different and I'm like, oh yeah, so the next one I make like will be better and better and better. Um, so this one was just for me and I knew that as like a rough draft as I call it. Um, so I knew that it wasn't going to come out the best, but starting is the first step and then you can build off of that. Um, by learning from your mistakes. So anyway, here is this part. <laughs> okay, so I am going to attempt to make a satin pillowcase for the first time. I am not a very good um, seamstress, I guess would be the best word for it. I am not a very good sewer, I guess. Um, I'm still new to all of this. I just upgraded from a starter sewing machine to a Husqvarna Viking 650, Opal 650, I think is what it's called. Anyway, um, it was a gift from my stepmother. Um, she is a quilter. She is extremely good at what she does. Um, so most of everything that I've learned, I've, I've learned from her or just trying to do it on my own, which is kind of what I'm doing here. I don't have any kind of like pattern. I didn't watch a YouTube video and try to figure it out. Like I'm just doing it on my own. So here I'm just marking my um, measurements. I believe I did this one a 30 by 20 because um, I wanted to give myself a little extra room f to make mistakes. I knew I was going to make mistakes. Um, so this is essentially just like a rough draft of learning how to make satin pillowcases. Uh, like I said, I am not a professional. This is gonna look horrible, I'm sure. <laughs> so, um, so again, here I'm just marking my uh, measurements and then I'm gonna take this cute little um, rotary cutter I got from Walmart. My husband bought me that. He picked it out. He thought it was cute. It's got Paisley's on it and my niece's name is Paisley so he knows I love it. Um, love that little design. So anyway, um, I'm gonna speed this up and you can kind of see the, you can kind of guess the process that I did. Um, I can already see myself cutting this knot straight and that bothers me now. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit and um, 
get to the next part. Okay, so I'm gonna smooth out. I didn't iron this satin because honestly, I'm so new to sewing that I don't even know if you can even iron satin. Um, so I, I just smoothed it out and then I was looking at my edges and making sure that I'm gonna have enough room to do some kind of little um, seam. But, um, so I'm going to just cut it in half straight down the middle where it was already folded and kind of, uh, well not kind of, I'm going to make two different pieces so that I can sew them together, um, if that makes sense at all. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing here, I'm just cutting it in half. Okay, so I'm gonna call myself out on some things that I've done here, um, just to kind of help other people if you're getting into sewing to learn what not to do for me. <laughs> so here I'm just putting the pillowcase in there and I'm gonna stitch down three sides. So down one side, across the bottom and up the top. And I'm gonna leave the very top of the pillowcase open so that there is a hole for it, the pillow to go in. Um, and while I was doing this stitch, I had a mess up, so I had to cut here and try it again. So I, I just cut that part out. It, I was having tension issues and my uh, thread was nesting on the back side, so I had to stop, fix it like two or three times. But I ended up having to watch a whole video on how to actually thread this the right way, because this machine is... Um, 
a lot more machine than what I'm used to. <laughs> um, so anyway, like I said, you're gonna stitch down one side across the bottom and up the other. I know that there's a lot of fabric um, and the two pieces of fabric don't match. I knew that it was gonna be like that and that's okay. Um, I wanted it that way so that I could give myself a lot of room to make mistakes. Um, I knew that this wasn't, I cut the fabric larger, um, more than I needed so that I could do this. Um, anyway, learning experience, that's what sewing is about. You do things, you make mistakes, and you learn from those mistakes. You don't learn from success, you learn from mistakes. So here I wanted to go across the bottom, so I had to stop, put my needle back down into the fabric, lift up my presser foot, turn the fabric, and then you're gonna put your foot back down and then stitch across the bottom. Okay, so here I'm folding the edges of the top part down um, so I could see if I had enough allowance for the seam. Um, and then here, I cut part of this out because I forgot to hit the record button, so I do apologize for that. So I'm trimming that excess fabric that I had, and the way that I do that is I take this little square um, ruler thing, and I'm getting my rotary cutter, and I'm getting as close to that seam as I can get without cutting the stitches. Um, and the reason that I'm doing that is that way I don't have all that bulk fabric like just hanging out there. It looks nicer. Um, I do this with all, pretty much all of my um, projects that I do. You, I always cut as close as I can get to that seam. It just makes your work look a lot better. Um, little tip I got from my mom. 
I didn't even know about that. And then in a minute, I'll show you how I cut, whoops, I almost dropped <laughs> that. Um, it's so like slick. <laughs> the satin is so slick. Um, so I'll go in with these scissors and get a little closer uh, to kind of trim up some more. And then in a minute, I'll show you how I cut my corners closer to the stitch so that it's not, it makes them look boxier. Okay, so here I'm going to show you how I cut that um, boxier corner. Um, so I'll pull the satin up and you can see I'm pointing it right there. I'm just going to cut a diagonal right along that corner. You're basically just cutting that tip off. And then when you fold out your project, whatever you're sewing, you should do this with everything. It makes those corners just nice and neat and it's not a bunch of bulk fabric like wadded up underneath there. It just, it's really nice. So, and then here, I'm just lining up my edges to make sure that they are pretty symmetrical. Um, Cause I had so much extra in the beginning I didn't cut them exactly the same and, and that's okay I wanted it that way so there I was just lining that up and then here I'm lining up where the seam for the top of the pillowcase is gonna be and again I am NOT a professional so I'm making mistakes as I go here I normally would say iron your seam here um, with normal fabric but I have no idea if I can even iron satin because I'm still so new to this so I was just like well I won't iron that I'll just try to finger press the seam and of course it didn't work so I ended up just trying the best that I could to make sure that it was even and looking back on it now what I should have done was took my rotary cutter and made sure that those two pieces of fabric were symmetrical and cut symmetrical because um, on one I had more like bulk I had more fabric on one side than I did the other, so it ended up not being a straight seam. Uh, but again, you live and you learn. And this is a rough draft. It's my pillowcase. It's not like I'm going to sell this one, so <laughs> that's a good thing. Okay, here I just want to add in how important it is to pin this part down, especially if you're not ironing it like I didn't. Um, because what I actually did with the pins, not only did it hold that in place, but the push pins were also a, um, like a guide. So I knew I wanted to go, I wanted my seam to be beneath those push pins. Um, and since I'm not the best at keeping a straight line, it kind of helped me there. Um, it didn't look as bad in the end as it could have. But uh, yeah, so just, I don't, I mean, there's some people that use clips and I actually like using clips when I'm quilting. My mom introduced me to that and I, like I said, I really like it for quilting and stuff, but stuff like this when I'm new and I'm just going off of what's in my brain of what I think would work, this push pins are great because not only do they hold stuff together, but they also act as a guide for me. Um, with my ADHD, it's hard for me to stay in a straight line and not like, because my brain wanders off so much. So the push pins, you know, when I see them, I'm like, oh, right, you know, gotta stay on this line. So, and that's all I'm doing here. Again, I'm just gonna like finger press that seam down um, and then I'll put the push pins in place. Ok, 
Okay, so now that I've done that part, I'm gonna move all my stuff out of my way and I'm gonna take the pillowcase and put it in the sewing machine. So what I did was I pulled the one side out and I put it from the top where that top push pin is and I used that as my guide. So you see I split there, split it so you don't want to mess up and accidentally sew both sides together because that would be terrible. You wouldn't even be able to get the pillow in there. <laughs> and then here, like I said, I'm I'm just going to start where that push pin is and and use the edge of my fabric and that push pin and that as a guide to stay in between those two. And then I'll work my fabric through. sewing those seams I'm showing you here they're not the greatest but it works so you just flip the pillowcase inside out which you can barely see and then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut my excess um, strings and then I noticed that the, the seams were a little uneven and rough but again like I said rough draft it's not gonna be perfect um, I'm just cutting that extra fabric off of there, like that. It, it doesn't look as bad now. Um, gonna do the same thing on the other side. Cut that extra fabric off as close to the seam as you can get without actually cutting the stitching. And then you're gonna just straighten it back out. And then you gotta do your corners. So you can either take scissors or a pen. I use the pen and just push those corners back out and then you can have boxy corners and you're done. And it's pretty easy. Um, I'll show pictures of what it looks like. So this is the finished product. Um, it's super cute. It looks good on my bed. Um, not the best, but it's a start. And I'm pretty happy with the end product. Um, like I said, it was just for me, so um, it's not going to be perfect, and it's, I mean, it's not like I'm selling this or anything, and I know that I'm not perfect, so that's okay. I'll get better. Um, I did use, um, honestly, if you have about a yard of satin of any color, you can do this. Um, I used my sewing machine, obviously, 
It's a Husqvarna Viking Opal 650. Um, I got that as a gift from my mom. <laughs> so uh, my mom is a quilter and she um, upgraded and so this is what I got. Um, and then I used push pins as well. So, and then the rotary cutter and the scissors I used, my husband bought me that from Walmart. It's the Pioneer Woman rotary cutter and scissors. They come in a pack. I think we paid like five bucks for them. Um, you get what you pay for when it comes to things like that though. Um, so I know that that rotary cutter isn't the best, but it does perfectly fine for little projects like this. Um, nothing super fancy. My advice for this would be just make sure that you're giving yourself time and grace. Uh, you're going to make mistakes. It's a part of learning in life. You have to be teachable in life, whether it be with sewing or anything. Um, so just don't get in a rush. You have all the, give yourself plenty of time. Take a day where you just don't do anything like me today. All I'm doing today is sewing and you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Um, give yourself time and space to make mistakes, not just, you know, with your personality or whatever, but just with the fabric too. I've learned um, one of the hardest lessons I've had to learn with quilting is that if you give yourself extra room, the better, because um, you can give yourself room to make mistakes. So, uh, like I said, this one was a 30 by 20 pillowcase. Um, 30 by 20 is when I cut it out. And I think the pillowcase that I measured for this was only like 17. 27 by 17 I think so anyway um but yeah I hope you enjoyed this good luck sewing <laughs>